dagashim. The Hebrew word dagish is basically the word for dot. A dagish is a dot that goes in certain kinds of letters in certain kinds of situations. Now, there are two kinds of dagashim. First, you have what's called the weak dagish, or it's called the dagish lene. Dagish lene. And then you have the dagish forte, which is the, the strong dagish. Think forte, if you, if you know music, sometimes a uh, composer will write forte over uh, a certain um, moment in a song, and that's to be played loudly and strongly. So you've got the weak dagish, the dagish lene, and the strong dagish, the dagish forte. First, let me talk about the dagish lene. The lene can only appear in six letters six different consonants. And those consonants are referred to with an acronym. Bigad Kefat. Bigad Kefat. Say it with me. Bigad Kefat. You'll want to remember that unword, non-word, uh, nonsensical word, because it represents these six letters written right here. And it just is a way of vocalizing the sounds of each of the six letters. So, b for bait, g for gimel, d for dalit, k for kaf, p or f uh, for the pay, and t for tav. Begad kefat. Begad kefat. Now, only these six letters can receive a dagish lene. And for three of the six letters, it affects the pronunciation of the letter. For the other three, way back when, at one point in time, it also affected their pronunciation, but it no longer does, particularly with modern Hebrew pronunciations. So the three letters that are affected uh, by the presence or absence of a dagish lene are first the bait. If the bait has a dagish, it's a b, a strong sound, labial sound, b. The gimel and the dalit are the same, whether or not there is a dagish. The kaf is likewise strong, k, or weak. <sighs> oh, excuse me. If the, if the bait does not have a dagish, it's weak. It's a v, v, b or v. The kaf, k, or ch, kind of got a hakalugi there on the kaf, ch. And the pe is the third letter. It's a p, a strong, explosive p, with a dagish. Without a dagish, it's a much softer, weaker sound, f, f, like uh, the English f or the English ph. And finally, the tav is not affected whether there is or is not a dagish. Only these six letters can take a dagish lene. And they only take a dagish lene if the letter follows either a closed syllable or some kind of grammatic pause. Okay? So, if... If you have a bait that's either in the middle of the word, at the end of a word, or at the beginning of a word, it can be anywhere within a word, if it follows a closed syllable, it will always have a dogish lene. Likewise, if a gimel, anywhere in a word, if it follows a closed syllable, it will have a dogish lene in every circumstance. Every time it will have one, if it can. So these letters are like uh, the sun, and dagashim uh, are pulled by a gravitational force to them, uh, but if, if they follow an open syllable, if they follow, for instance, a comets, if they follow a vowel, they will not have a dagash lene. The reverse is true for the dagash forte. 
The dogish forte is called the forte for two reasons. One, because it's strong and it can, uh, it, it sort of has enough strength to follow a vowel, unlike the dogish lane. But also, the dogish forte is, uh, is called the doubling dogish. So if you have a dogish forte, that letter is going to be doubled, which does affect um, pronunciation a little bit, but mostly it affects kind of syllabification. Uh, but later on in the course, when we start talking about verb stems, the dogish forte will come into play in a primary way because it appears in certain verb stems and it doubles a certain letter within each verb. But for now, the dogish forte is the doubling dogish, and it can appear in any letter. So you can also have dogish forte appear in any of these six letters or all the others, except none of these letters can take any dogish whatsoever, forte or lene. These five letters here are the, the guttural letters. Some of them are also weak letters, uh, but these five are guttural. Uh, that's what they're called. They're called the guttural letters because for some reason or other, they're pronounced with some kind of guttural sound, often back in the throat somewhere. So uh, the aleph, the he, the hate, the ayin, and the resh, cannot take dagish. They can't be doubled. I mean, go ahead and try pronouncing two ains right in a row. You'll probably throw up your lunch. Ah, ah, ain. Ain is way back here. Ah, 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 ah. You, you just can't do two ain sounds in a row. Um, and so uh, those, those five consonants cannot be doubled. So they, they reject. They reject the dagish. Generally, it'll be a dogish forte. Actually, in every, in every case, they'll reject the dogish forte because only these six letters can take a dogish lane. So if these five letters have, for some reason or another, uh, if, if the word wants it to accept a dogish forte for reasons that you aren't able to digest at this point, but for any number of reasons, if a dogish forte wants to get inside any of these five letters, these letters will reject the dogish, and something called compensatory lengthening will take place, which is a fancy way of saying the previous vowel will be lengthened to compensate, right? Compensatory lengthening. The previous vowel will compensate by being lengthened. So it'll move from a short vowel to a long vowel. Now it's important to note that dogish forte, the doubling dogish, always follows a vowel. Dogish forte will not follow a closed syllable, unlike the dogish lene, which can only follow a closed syllable or some kind of grammatical pause. Now this is within a word, but also between words. So if one word ends with a vowel, it's an open syllable on the end, and the next word begins with, say, a bait, that, that word beginning with the bait, the bait will not have a dogish lene because it follows an open syllable. So that's the dogish. Dogish lene, dogish forte. The forte is the doubling dogish. The begad kefat letters are the only letters that can take a dogish lene, and the five guttural letters reject the dogish forte because they refuse to be doubled.